Guys, our 10 times bonus entry week is here. So if you want to grab those 10 times bonus entries right now to enter to win this truck plus $5,000 in cash, all you got to do is go to lnpgear.com, place an order, and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. 10 times bonus entries will not last very long though, so if you want to grab them, grab them while you can. Or forever hold your peace, and best of luck to you. Somebody's got to take this thing home. Somebody could be you. Well, fam, we are officially in the new location. Pretty freaking pumped. So there is a slew of videos we are gonna be trying to film here at the new location. We got everything from tractor stuff, redoing a bunch of shop stuff. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff we're gonna be doing here and I'm super pumped. But on that note, I cannot do it all in this one video. I've got a mission to get the Alice Chalmers in the best running and operating condition that I can get it with the least amount of work that I have to do on it just to at least get it to be in perfect running order to keep on mowing the property. There's a lot of mowing here. The yard was about two, two and a half weeks not mowed when we moved in the other day. So we have the equipment to get it taken care of, but I just need to make sure that this thing is running in great condition. So I'm gonna go over some of the few things that I have had to do on the Alice Shelmers. And yes, I know in the comments, you guys are probably gonna be asking to see a bunch of different things. I mean, you guys probably have a lot of questions and there's a lot of things to go over with the new property, the new house, new barns, whole bunch of new stuff going on. Uh, but for today's mission, I have got to get this Alice Chalmers fully serviced because this thing has probably never had a service. I don't know who owned this tractor before my grandfather. But I will tell you this, he was not a service type of man. Uh, he was kind of more like check the level if it's low, add a little here and there, but never like a full flush and replacing of fluids and stuff. That was just never really his thing. And so I have no idea when this thing was serviced last, what the fluid levels are really at. Yesterday was probably the most I've driven this thing since I bought it off my grandmother. And I put like, you know, an hour and a half on it yesterday. And that's the most amount of solid run time that this thing has had in a long time. And uh, it did great once I got it going. But I'm gonna tell you the problems that I had with it. So it was doing this thing that I tried to explain a long time ago. I think it was last fall. So it, it would have been several, I mean, dozens and dozens of videos ago. The thing was running kind of funny. So like when you'd go uphill or you try to put it under more of a load, it would just like pop, 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 pop. Like it's not, like it's starving for fuel and it would like have no fuel and then it would like no fuel and then like rev out of control and then it would just completely cut out and die. Like it was just starving for fuel. I thought it was a float problem. A lot of people thought it was a float problem. Some people thought, oh, you know, you're, it's misfiring on a couple cylinders. Like there was a lot of different theories and scenarios. Well, what I ended up doing was draining the entire fuel tank and finding several small bees floating around in the bottom of the fuel tank, some grass. I mean, I'm talking this stuff has probably been preserved in that fuel tank for 15 years plus, and I have, you know, and, and they just happen to slowly make their way down into that exact spot to cause problems with the fueling of this thing. So when that tractor would go, you know, to work harder and draw more fuel into the engine, it would like pull those little pieces of debris and bees and grass and stuff down into that, you know, flow valve basically pulling it down into the sediment bowl, which then takes it to the carburetor, of course. Well, it was at the sediment bowl getting clogged up, and then anything that did make it through would, of course, then end up getting sucked through the lines and into the carb and just creating all sorts of um, problems. So, that being said, I drained all the fuel, got a bunch of debris out and stuff. Things started running awesome, right? I had a couple hours straight just going at it, mowing grass, and I got the thing down to cut at like four and a half inches, and it does a really good job of cutting, at least on dry grass. Now, of course, it's all soaking wet, but it was bone dry yesterday and doing great. I had it in second. I even had it in third gear, and the thing was just flying across the yard, just cutting it way better than my zero turn could. Um, doing a great job. And then, tractor just dies out of the blue, just, just like, pop, 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 dead. Like it was like just totally lost 
fuel pressure or something, I don't know what, or air got, air, you know, air got in, somehow starved it out. Well, I covered it up with a little bit of, with some thread locker. That's actually, you know, that's not what that thread locker is obviously not for patching small holes. But what was happening was the tractor finally has a lot of fuel pressure now and whatnot. Well, it had punctured a teeny tiny hole in the carburetor right there. I can show you that in the photo here if I can do that right there. So that little tiny pinhole. So I get off and I'm like, what in the heck? Like I got all the debris out. I completely air blew out every hole and everything inside that carburetor. I mean, I worked everything on that top to bottom, blew everything out with carb cleaner and an air hose, high pressure air, all the fuel lines and everything. I'm like, there's no way there's anything in there still. And then I go to pull it and I'm standing here by the carb and I'm reaching over to try to pull it and I see fuel just spraying out. And I'm like, the lines are good. It was spraying out of the side of the carb right there. There's a little tiny rust pinhole or something and fuel is just spraying out. So then I took a shop rag and I pressed it up against that tiny hole to keep that air from you know, getting in there is bad or that fuel getting out, whatever it was doing, and pulled it after 10 minutes of trying to start it, couldn't get anything. I plugged that little tiny pinhole, pulled the thing, just fired off like perfect. And I'm like, great. So that's why I put that little bit of anti seize on there just to kind of airtight seal that off just a little bit. Um, so I was able to start it and drive it, you know, 200 yards back up to the barn at least. So I'm close to the barn to be able to fix this for now. So what I'm gonna do for now. Um, is just try to um, put a little bit of JB Weld on that because this isn't dried up. It's been on there for like 24 hours, but it's just kind of like this goo that um, is not dried up, but it sealed it off enough to keep the fuel um, flowing to the engine and get it pulled up here. So I'm gonna actually kind of scrape that stuff away and put a little dab of JB Weld over that tiny pinhole for now, just so that we can um, have that hole plugged so we can keep running the thing. But I also have to try to drain all of the fluids and replenish them today because this thing probably hasn't had the fluid serviced on this thing in a long time. And although I'm not planning on working this tractor like on an annual basis all summer and fall regularly forever, I am probably gonna try my best to use this tractor for at least a summer or two, maybe, probably realistically just this one summer um, for like mowing and tilling some small things around here. And then other than that, the tractor is gonna end up being pretty much retired and then it's just gonna be getting restored um, pretty much to new standard all over again. But for now, I'm gonna use it while I need a tractor before I, uh, purchase another one. I almost did that the other day. I was so furious with not being able to mow and couldn't get, figure out why this thing couldn't run. I went to the dealer close by to look at some tractors and I was like trying to price stuff out, trying to get a hold of my bank to do a wire transfer. And I mean, it, I, nobody was open. Of course, it was a Saturday late afternoon and I couldn't get anything done. I was like, well, forget about it. I'll be in touch in a few days whenever things open back up on Monday morning. And in the meantime, I actually ended up getting that thing somewhat figured out to where then I can at least still use it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna hold off on the tractor for a while unless this thing keeps giving me problem after problem after problem then we'll buy one but if it you know just has a few small things that I just can figure out easy enough and it'll do the job it's got plenty of power for what I need to do right now and might as well use it while it's not restored and I don't feel bad working it. So I'm gonna actually get to draining these fluids and uh, let them drain while I go to grab the new hydraulic fluid for this thing because I wanna make sure that this thing has plenty of time for everything to drip and seep out because it's probably disgusting. So I'm gonna start with drain plug number one. If I can crack this one loose here. Like I said, I have no idea when this was ever serviced, if it was ever serviced. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, that's bad. Gross. That stuff is like sandy. Like, that's bad. I'm gonna get to taking this one off too right now. There wasn't a whole lot in there. Maybe a half quart at most. A fourth of a quart. And then there's a couple more over there. So I'm gonna grab my other pan and crack those off.
Look at this. I mean, this stuff is like... It's like putty. That's a piece of metal. See that on the end of my nail? It's a piece of metal. Way overdue. Technically, what this tractor would need, which is part of the end goal for it to be all restored like new, is to have all the pans and everything taken off so you can take all the pans completely off and super deep clean everything and then put it back together with new fluid. But for today, because um, if that's that sticky just on the drain plug, imagine, imagine how much is coating the whole entire pan in there that we can't drain, like we can't get out, you know what I mean? So, but for now, um, all I'm gonna be able to do is let it drain as long as I can and then put all new fluids in and just hope that uh, it can help it last at least a while longer. But I mean, it's been running like this crappy for, I mean, it's been running good with crappy uh, service records for probably 15 plus years, so 20 years, so who knows. It'll probably be fine for another season or two. So we did get the oil and all the fluids changed on the old Alice Chalmers. There weren't very many fluids that came out of the thing. I mean, the oil was at like half the level it was supposed to be, and all of the transmission, differential, and like hydraulic oil was all extremely low. Like, let me show you. So I grabbed this pan and this 16 quart container thinking there was gonna be like at least 16 quarts that came out of the thing. I mean, cause there should, there should have been. And this thing I think is full to about, let me see, it's pretty light. Maybe here? Yeah. So, yeah, not very much compared to what it's supposed to be. So, and I actually put an entire bucket of um, oil for the rear diff, PTO, I mean, all that stuff, all the three plugs that were on there to um, drain and refill. I think there were four or five drain plugs total, and I put all the fluid back in on top above all those areas with all the plugs there were to fill everything back up. And, um, yeah, the thing was ultra, ultra low on pretty much everything. Hopefully it runs a lot better now. It ran fine um, once I got the fuel situation figured out. When I say fine, I'm talking like fine compared to how bad it did run. It, it kept running like crap under a load because it couldn't draw fuel through. Sounds good right now. So we're gonna get this thing going and we're gonna get to mowing some of the yard and hopefully she runs smooth. Well, the tractor ended up doing totally great. Um, did great, I got everything mowed. Got everything mowed pretty, pretty good. There's a ton of front yard and then I got this mowed back here as much as I could until the sky started turning black and seeing lightning <laughs> go across. So I figured that was a good time to park it and cut it off and uh, come back to the rest of it another time. Probably mowed. Five acres or so? Not bad, not bad. It's been sitting here about 10 minutes now, but you can see all this fluid. That is the uh, gear oil, hydraulic fluid or whatever, um, leaking. And it did that before, because the gasket right here is bad, and so it's just, 
looking like crazy, but now that there's actually a lot of fluid in there, it looks like it's leaking even more because there's actually plenty of fluid to lose. So um, that is at some point going to have to get fixed, but for now we're just going to have to watch fluid levels and keep everything where it needs to be. That is going to be a wrap on this video. Many more coming. This is just one that I had to, I had to get the mowing done today. The yard was literally like 18 inches tall, so I had to I had to mow, but um, I do have a bunch of videos planned that we're going to be going through. And let me know if there's any particular one you want to see sooner than another. And um, we'll be sure to take those into consideration. But we do have a lot of stuff planned because we got a lot to do around here to get the shop ready um, so we can start to tear into new projects and stuff. So we got our hands full, but we're going to get right to it and get her done. So if you have not done so yet, right now you can get 10 times entries towards winning this 95 Compound Turbo 12 valve Cummins plus $5,000 cash. There's just over two weeks left to enter to win that thing. It ends on June 3rd. June 3rd is your last day to enter to win. And always remember that if you purchase a monthly mystery box and subscribe to one of those, you get 20 times entries no matter when you purchase one. And every time it renews, you get 20x entries either in the current giveaway or if a giveaway is just ended, going towards the next giveaway that we do. So thank you guys so much for all the love and all the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.